do you want to read faster? I hear this from so many students who tell me, look, prof, I'm losing so much time reading. I feel like I'm just slower than everybody else. What am I doing wrong? How can I fix it so that I can be faster and get more things done. Listen, what I'm gonna show you in this video is the triple pass method. That's a method I wish I had had because it would have saved me so much time and bolted my reading to lightning speed. And the way it's gonna do that is not exactly the way you think. Because let me let you in on a secret. The people who are really fast, they're often not reading, reading in a conventional way per se. There are really two types of reading and learning that happen. One is a very detailed, deep dive, verbatim kind of knowledge. Cognitive psychologists talk about this in dual process uh, visions of cognition. So that verbatim knowledge is when you memorize details, facts, figures. The other is reading for gist, where you really just get the idea of the, con of the concept, of the main point or main idea of a paper. And so what we're gonna do with this triple pass method is we're gonna help you identify why you're reading a paper, what you're trying to get out of it, and then execute the right method that's gonna be the most efficient time-wise to get exactly what you need, whether that's just the gist or that's the verbatim. So let's dive straight in. So the triple pass method is a bit like uh, Google Map in a way, which you all have familiar with. You know, at the top of the map, when you open it up, you've got the bird's eye view. And then as you start zooming in, you get to the next layer where you can kind of see street by street what's going on. And at the final layer of Google Map, when you've zoomed all the way in, you're actually on street view and you can see the trees around you, the house, maybe the backyard swimming pool, even some, some people hanging out on the side of the road. And that's the core of the triple pass. So when you want to read, you wanna figure out which of these views from Google Map is gonna achieve the goal you want. But if you're just reading and you don't know why you're reading, you're not gonna be able to figure out which zoom mode on the map you need for your reading. So first things first, ask yourself, what are you trying to achieve when you read? Are you trying to generate hypotheses? Are you trying to generate ideas? Maybe find a structure. Maybe just understand the boundaries of your field, kind of where the state of the art is, where it isn't. Or are you more towards that verbatim type knowledge I was talking about before? Do you really need to extract fine grained details, coefficients, estimates of an effect, equations, figures? Uh, is this a core paper that's maybe central to a methodology that you need to go replicate for yourself? So you need deep knowledge and, and learning. I want you to take a moment and define that as I go through each pass of our zooms of this triple pass method. And then that's gonna help you figure out what you need to do. Let me just go ahead and say, of, of the different passes that are available, the, the bird's eye view, where you're kind of zoomed out in Google Map, I would say 95% of my reading is at that pass. As a professor, I've published over 400 articles now in peer-reviewed journals. And if I look back and I think over the past month, how many articles have I read Start to finish, I'm thinking here for a second. I'm really thinking. The answer is zero. I haven't read, no, I, I'm actually thinking back now in the past six months, it's still zero. I almost never read an article start to finish. And so you might ask yourself, well, you know, I'm, I'm not a professor, I haven't published hundreds of articles, I need to read start to finish. No, you really don't. It's only in exceptional cases that you need to do so, and I'm gonna highlight those now. So the first pass, or the triple pass, what I call the bird's eye view, is really good for just getting that sense, dipping your toe in the water and understanding what's out there. What you might wanna do here is you just scan the abstract in the introduction and get a, a sense, that gist kind of sense. What do the authors do, what do they find? On your first glance, you even wanna first figure out, do I even wanna read this article? Is this article even relevant to my goal right now. And already in that way, you're gonna save so much time because I see so many students who are just reading everything. That's what they've done before. They were assigned a reading for the class, so I gotta read that. I've now gone to Google Scholar, I found a paper, I gotta read that. But you will find in a lot of cases, once you've defined your why, you don't need to read it. So I would do a first pass. Go get yourself 10, 15 papers on your topic from Google Scholar or wherever you're searching and first make the decision, do I actually need to read this? And do a quick scan to figure that out. Don't treat it like, right, when I go shopping, okay, this is my personal philosophy on shopping, not saying you have to do that. There's a treasure hunt philosophy, and there's the like, quick in and out. I personally don't like shopping. Some people 
get joy out of it, good for you. But for me, it's in and out. If I don't see what I wanna buy on the first pass in, I'm not spending more time in the shop, right? So you could think, oh, these 15 articles, there could be this precious, precious pearl or nugget in there if I just kind of fine tooth comb and start digging and digging. Uh, don't do that, don't do that. I, I really recommend my philosophy of shopping, a your reading. If you don't think it's relevant and it doesn't jump out to you immediately, don't do the treasure hunt. You probably don't need to do that. Kind of quick in, quick out, figure out if you need to read it. So that's the bird's eye view, right? You're just getting a sense of the article, the gist, what the authors did well. The second, when you kind of zoomed in, kind of like a bird in Google Map, I kind of call a swoop. And this is where you might want to swoop in forensically and just pull out key information. Maybe now you're actually doing a literature review and you need to really understand the methods that were employed by the different papers. In that case, you're gonna zoom in, you're not even gonna read the introduction or the conclusion. In this case, you know, like a laser beam, you're gonna go straight to the method section and just extract that critical information from the method so you can line up your paper side by side and say, look, there's lots of methodological differences in my field between how they approach this, this question in the papers that you searched. That, that second, kind of swoop view where you've zoomed in but you're not fully at the street eye to eye level yet, that swoop view, I would say it's gonna apply in the next 4% of the papers that you're gonna look at and you usually have in this case a very specific defined purpose of some methods or some results that you wanna line up and compare across papers. Again, I find this particularly helpful when you're writing up a literature review, you've defined a search strategy and you know what you want in for it. The final set. And this is the 1%, right? This should be, for most of you, the exception. And this is when you have a paper that you almost want to virtually re-implement. You wanna virtually reconstruct. You wanna to get to know this paper so well, it's like you've slept with it in your bed, you've cuddled up with it, you, you kinda, of, you're in the author's heads, you know not just what they did, but how they did it to where you could almost do it yourself. This is really great when you have a concept of a paper that I often call a nearest neighbor paper. This might be a paper that's a model for you in your field, or it might be the paper that's closest to yours, but uh, hasn't done exactly what you wanna do. And then I always encourage students to find that paper so they know where the frontier is in their field and they know what gap they're gonna go fill with their own research. Um, this is also quite useful if you're peer reviewing a paper and you wanna give the author critical and constructive and helpful feedback. By the way, don't be one of those jerk peer reviewers that just like sling arrows without providing helpful suggestions. Many of us have been on the receiving end of it. It's not fun. Don't be that person. So anyway, it, it, this is very valuable for peer review if you want to intimately reconstruct a paper. But like I said, this is the 1%. So the short sum of this triple paths method is to define your why and figure out which is the right pass. And without any of these kind of speed reading, quick techniques for skimming and other things that are gonna make you hyper accelerate readers, we're gonna take a different tack. And like I said, by implementing these techniques, you're just gonna simply strip out a lot of junk and garbage that's filling your head with information that's not really useful for where you're trying to go. And by the way, uh, one thing in general, in charting out where you wanna go and how this reading fits into your path and your growth as a researcher is to create a roadmap. It's a session that I've done one-to-one -one with my graduate students, many researchers, even other professors in the field to help you have clarity and direction about your career. So everything is going in a straight line, not this kind of like zigzag, zoom here, left, everywhere, but not where you want to go. It's like if you want to go to London, but you're stopping at Frankfurt Airport, and then you're going down to Dublin, you're losing a lot of time. And this is commonly a symptom that students are coming to me with when they say, I'm just bad at reading. And the truth is you're probably not just bad, you're just reading the wrong things. If you found this video helpful, do give us a like. It helps us reach other people as I've learned from this journey of my own on YouTube and understanding the algorithm. And do join my Facebook group because we can directly communicate there and my assistants can set you up with the right training that you need right now to get to where you want to go. See you in the next video, everybody.